final. So league form goes out the window. Um, players are all excited and wanting to do, uh, wanting to impress. Um, and it's quite funny. I think this week is the first week we've had a training session with no injured people uh, getting treated on the bench. Uh, they, they were all training. So it's, it's an important game for not only for the, the club, but for the players because it may be the one and only chance that these players might get to a final. So going into the game, you know, we, we've got to go into it prepared against a chipper team that like us have been struggling in the league but have, 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 have got a good couple of results behind them and obviously the, they've appointed a new technical director or head coach as, as, as I see he is and it's for me it's it's a privilege and I'm very honoured that I'm in this country after 30 odd years when I last played in a cup final that I'm able to do it again. And especially on the disappointment of last season's uh, result against Bloomfield and Celtic when we got beat in the semi-final whilst I was at Broca. But, you know, it's going to be a very, very tough game. And we've, 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 we've got the disadvantage of having one day training preparation because we played last night against Kaiser Chiefs. So, you know, the, the chipper, um, Players and staff, they'll have had extra days rest, extra days training. And, you know, that, 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 that doesn't go well for us. But, you know, we, we put a very, very good um, performance last night, which was very, very successful uh, up until the 96th minute. And, you know, we've got to look forward to this cup final and, and create history for the, I think, is it the first time it will have been won in Limpopo province? Uh, then Bangkok, correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct, that's correct. So the 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 the, the players, well, everybody involved in the in, in, in the in the club, the staff, the players, you know, right right up to the chairman and, and all the all the staff, you know, we've got something to to achieve the first in football, but also like I tell the players, you know. Nobody remembers runners up. Nobody remembers losers. Uh, and don't don't be one of them on when it comes to eight o'clock Saturday night. Okay, let me take the first question from the floor, and it will be Carabo. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Fatu. Uh, Good day, good day, coach. Uh, congratulations on your massive victory yesterday. Uh, good, good victory, uh, uh, coach. Now you've, I think you've touched on it, but uh, just a bit of notch. Uh, how do you, how do you keep the players grounded after a massive victory yesterday? And also going into the match on Saturday, how do you ensure that the players play the match and not the occasion? Because obviously uh, they've got the wind in the in their sail at this moment in time after a massive victory, as I said yesterday. So how do you ensure that the players play the match and not the occasion? Thank you. Well, I think you know. Yeah, thank you for the for the comments on last night's result. I've been I've been preaching to these players that they can play like that every single game, you know. And, and sometimes it, it 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 doesn't always work. Are uh, in the case against Black Leopards, but they responded. And I think the the added pressure of them wanting to be selected on on Saturday gave us a very very good showing yesterday. And I hope that they're not going to leave that performance in Limpopo when we travel all the way to Bloomington. I want that performance, what we did last night, replicated but even better on Saturday. And like I said, this week, there's been nobody injured in this past 10 days. Everybody's pronounced fit. And today, obviously, we had a recovery session for the players that played the majority of the game last night. They were all, uh, they did a warm up and they went into the pool and did an ice bath for recovery. And there's no more, you don't have to motivate anybody for a cup final. I've been in cup finals, I've been in championship teams, winning teams. The motivation is there in itself. And it's not about cash, it's not about financial gain. It's about winning the trophy, it's about bringing name in South Africa's soccer history books. And I'm, I'm proud that, and, and, I'll, and I'll still talk about it now, you know, in, in 1986, when I came to this country, unawares of what South African life would be, unawares of what 
was happening in the country with apartheid, unawares of the football culture in, in South Africa. You know, when we got to the final, Arcadia Shepherds and myself grabbed it with both hands and, and, and we were successful because we all wanted to play um, and even those that didn't want to play were behind the players that started. And that's what I want to portray <clears throat> this week leading up to the game. Just think about winning, you know, and, and, and you've got an opportunity to do what a lot of football players never get the chance to do. That's to hold the trophy aloft after 95 minutes of playing uh, in the Ned Bank Cup final, which is the, no disrespect to any, uh, you know, the MTN8 or the, the Telcom formerly, you know, it's the pinnacle of, of South African Cup football. Okay, let's move on to Rob. Hi, Coach. Uh, Rob Delport in Cape Town. Hope you're well. Um, I'm good, Coach. Rob. How's, Cape, how's sunny Cape Town? Well, not sunny today. Not sunny today. <laughs> uh, Coach, we, we obviously lost a bit of the romanticism of the Ned Bank Cup without the, 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 the minnows in the competition. But it must be nice to, to have a bit of it with two first-time finalists uh, in the final. And of course, also, you getting your work permit in time for the final must be something that you're very happy about. Well, if you can imagine, I've been here just over, well, just under three months. And obviously, the, the delay of, of the work permit was due to uh, certain wordings in the contract that I didn't want in, in, in included. And then obviously, I don't, with, I don't think this club's ever got a, a work permit for a foreign player before. So the, the hassles that we had to go through and me and Brian, who's the admin at the club, I mean, we, we, we worked every single day on trying to get the documents together, trying to get everything together. And yesterday morning, we actually got someone to fetch my card from the PSL once I'd run around getting certification from the police, identity from police, fingerprints from everything. And from eight o'clock yesterday morning till 11 o'clock, um, I was running around Polokwane like an absolute idiot, trying to get all the paperwork, all the boxes ticked, all the dots crossed, everything. And thank God somebody was coming from Johannesburg to, to Polokwane we were able to bring it and, and it arrived at 2.30. So, yeah, it's nice to, to, to be finally on the bench. Um, and I'll be honest, I'll give credit to him for David. You know, the inexperience of being in PSL, uh, the learning that they're doing, the learning that they're, that, that, that they're enjoying. Uh, it's, I've been able to stand up in the stand and, and trust them with, with what they've been, you know, with, with passing messages on and relaying instructions to the players. Um, in a different way. So, yeah, it was yesterday, yesterday it was good to be back on the bench. And uh, I think the players appreciated it as well. You know, the, I think they got fed up with listening to a poor shout at them. Gents, gents, gents. Clifford. Thanks, Patu. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Clifford here, Capricorn FM. Uh, uh, Clifford. Hi, Coach. Uh, just looking at, you know, your work so far, you've been, you know, uh, you're, it's, this is your third team in Limpopo. The previous two teams, you did very well with them, you know, making sure that they retain their status in the, in, in, in the league. Now you have a chance of making sure that another team retain their status, but not just that. Make sure that by the end of the season, it's their first season in the top flight. They end the season with some silverware. Yes, it's um, like I say. You, you, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm not saying I'm a, on a different level um, of the, the majority of coaches in this country. Um, I've got, I've been brought up, you know, in, in football the correct way of of how things in a football club should be. And one of the things that you you need to have in in a football club is trust and team camaraderie and, and team spirit. And, you know, in my first season of Black Leopards, I had that. Um, even at Barocca, um, I had that as well. And 
I'll be honest, it's 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 been a big improvement coming to TTM. Um, and it's been enjoyable to to go to work every morning, knowing that I'm not being interfered with, I've not been told I should do this and we should do that, and not having assistant coaches that you know are wanting your position and, and when you relay a message to 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 them and they take the message a different way, you know, it, it's it's it kind of it kind of hurts you. And I go to training every day and work with some good players. And when I leave training every day, I'm happy of what, what, we've, what we've achieved. And I think you saw last night um, against Chiefs, albeit they had 10 men, but it's, it's more difficult to break down a team with 10 men sometimes than it is with 11. And the same against Bloemfontein Celtic. You know, that they were two tough games and we both, we came out winners. We only let ourselves down against Black Leopards. And that was because we were, what's the word? Um, what the word is now? We became too complacent, you know, and, and I saw it in the dressing room before the game. You know, I think the players knew they just had to put the jersey on, go on the grass, kick a few balls and come off winners. And we, we got a shot, we got, they got the shock of their lives. So, you know, it's been, I'm, I'm going to get labelled as, as a coach that keeps, that tries to keep, uh, teams in the PSL. One day I'm going to prove a lot of people wrong and I'm going to make sure that um, next season that I, I, I make sure that this team, as good as it is, can get better. So um, their success is my success. You know, it's not all about me and the coaching staff. We don't kick the ball. We don't take the throwings. We don't take penalties. You know, we just give instructions and we try and get the right balance and we still, we still fine tuning things, even this late uh, stage in the season. But that's because every game I've got a headache of a squad to pick. Never mind the eleven to pick. I've got a headache to pick the squad. Now I'm going to have a migraine. I'm going to have the biggest migraine for two days to pick a starting eleven because, as you know, I'm going to piss a lot of people off because some people, some players will not play. Some players will not even get stripped. So it's, 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 I've been in that scenario as well. I've been in that position where going back in 1995 when Reading got to the playoff final against Bolton, I practically, practically played 96% of the games. And when it comes to the final at Wembley Stadium, the old Wembley Stadium, which was childhood ambition was to play at, at Wembley, I was left out of the team, I was left out of the squad. So I know, I know how people are going to feel come Friday night when I name the team. But, you know, I'm hoping that everybody will appreciate, you know, the, 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 the thought that goes into picking this 11 against a team that's not like us, like I said, are not doing as well uh, in the league as we are. And, but it's a cup game and we've got to be clever. We've got to be, you know, we've got to be street smart, you know, and, and play the way we, we played. Uh, against Chiefs last night. Nati? Yes, thank you, Coach. Uh, Nati here speaking. You actually just touched on what I wanted to ask you, but how frustrating was it for you, you know, to send a message across while you were seated, not on the bench, but uh, on the other side? And, and also, as you prepare for this game, do you also prepare with uh, extra time at the back of your mind, or you just want to uh, wrap up the game within uh, 90 minutes? Well, obviously you want to wrap the game up, Nati, in, uh, in 90 minutes. That means you have to score goals. You have to score more goals in the opposition. Um, but we, we, we will practice penalties, uh, as we have done in the previous rounds. And, you know, you... you, you... What was your first question, Nati? The, the, just share with us how frustrating was it? Oh yeah, uh, frustrating. Well, there's no crowd, so there's no fuvuzelas, there's no shouting, there's no singing, there's no drum beats. So the, the the difficulty is when I'm when I'm passing instructions from the stand and shouting at the players from the stand, I'm just like a supporter, you know. So it is very hard to relay a message to the players when you stood halfway 
up the in, in, in the stand and, and shout at the top of your voice, or, and and everybody can hear it. Everybody can hear it. So it's it's not advantageous to be there. Whereas if you're on the sidelines, you can you can call a couple of players over and say, "Listen, we need to do A, B, C, or we need to ch change X, Y, Z." As we did in the last fifteen minutes, um, when just after Chiefs had scored, you know, I told I was able to tell Miguel Tim to sit back in front of uh, Donyani and Nyanda and let the two fullbacks push on, which gave Chiefs the problem, and, and that created, created a lot of problems for, for Kaiser Chiefs, and it ended up with us getting the penalty and winning the game. If I was up in the stand, you, you, you kind of missed that. Even though you see the bigger picture, don't get me wrong, it's nice sitting up in the stand because you can see everything that down at eye level, nothing happens. So it, whilst it's been difficult, I have had two assistants that are very, very approachable and, and will talk and will listen rather than you know do, do their own things. So it's been good. It's been good. Vakele. Oh, thanks for to um, good afternoon, Coach. Um, Zakele from the news, newspaper in, in Devon, Coach. Uh, your team is largely made of um, some will call the head spins. Um, the players have played in different teams. Some have won trophies before. Um, what 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 do you think? What do you think? But in particular, what do you think of um, Tukelo Ranti, um, who was at some stage one of the most feared strikers um, in Africa? How is it going? Do you see him going back to that standard that he that he where he used to be? Um, yeah, good. Well, we, you know, Ranchi has had a he's had an up and down season since he left South Africa, I believe. You know, and he, he, I think who signed him for millions was it Portsmouth? What team in England signed him? Um, I forgot the Bournemouth. 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 Sorry, Bournemouth. I knew it was, was down there somewhere in the south, um, southwest. Yeah. So he got he got he got sold for millions. He went. I think he went then to Sweden, and I think he lost his way. Uh, I think there were some personal issues um, that affected his um, well-being and his performance. But since I've been here and he's, since he's been playing. He's been working very, very hard. And one of the things I was told when he when, when I first came to this club, um, somebody in the Premier League uh, kind of highlighted to me the, the issues that um, branches went through. And when I first came, I said to him, you know, this is his last chance, last chance saloon here for, for, for his playing career, because if he doesn't make a success here, no, I don't think too many clubs in South Africa or anywhere would be would be knocking on his door or ringing his agent. You know, so it's it's he's been very very good in training. Um, he, he gets kicked the most in training because of his pace, because of his cleverness. So he gets kicked quite a lot by defenders in training because they don't want him to score. They don't want them to be embarrassed if he takes them up. Uh, and you know, last night. It was between Branches and uh, Tembi, uh, who I replaced with uh, with uh, the substitute. And Tembi's been playing recently, and he's been playing really, really well. I just have to explain to Tembi the offside rule, you know, because I don't think I think he thinks that if you're in front of the defenders, you're onside. I think he's got to. I think I've got to educate him on offsides. Okay, and then Dalmain. Hi, Coach. Uh, good afternoon, Dalmain here from Soccer La Duma. Um, How's it, Dalmain? You're right. I'm good, thanks, Coach. I can't complain. Coach, I just want to know. So two weeks ago, we had uh, Coach Mpomalita here, and we had asked him for an update on uh, George Libise, and he said to us that Libise is about two, three weeks away from from being able to get anywhere near playing. Um, so I just want to find out, Coach, is there any possibility of us possibly seeing Lebese make his TTM debut in the cup final? 
And then also, just if you can give us an injury update, coach, uh, just from your side going into, into the match this weekend. Well, as far as I know, George is no longer with us um, due to his work visa. And he's, 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 we can't get FIFA clearance for him. So I think George agreed. Uh, I, I don't know um, because I've not seen him. But I think George has gone home. You know, and I think, uh, I don't know if he's still uh, part of TTM, but I can understand his frustrations. When he came, he was way off the pace. I mean, you know, he would, he'd, he'd be risking serious injury um, if, he, if, we, if we did play him in a competitive game because he's not been training, he's not been playing since November. So it, it, it was a long way short of the rest of the squad. And we, we tried very, very hard to get his work, his, his ITC. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the, 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 re, the legal, legalities of it in America, he was already contracted to that club. He wasn't really a free agent. So we couldn't, we couldn't really sign him. And I think the last time I spoke to him was a week last Friday. And, and he, he, he hinted to me that he was going to go home. And on the injury front, um, I don't think, touch wood, um, anybody's injured uh, from last night. Uh, and uh, Alfie, the uh, in Ghana, he's, he's got flu um, and he's, he's, he struggled yesterday. He's, he's coming training today. So uh, we'll, we'll monitor him today you know, over the next 48 hours to see if he, he fully recovers from his flu. And I know how bad it's been because I, I had it the whole of last week as well. And with a little bit of luck, you know, we finished training just now. Tomorrow morning, when we get ready to travel to Bloemfontein, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully have a, a, a full bill of health, healthy, hungry, happy, um, cup winning players to travel to Bloemfontein. I'll go back to Clifford. Thanks, Fatu. Uh, coach, yesterday when we were talking to the Chipa United coach, Coach Velislav, Eric mentioned he mentioned that you know TTM is a slipping lion, just waiting to pounce. Would you agree with him? And also, uh, looking at the time that your, your your work permit came, would you say that it came at the right time? Looking at the stage of the season that you know the team is in. I mean, look, Coach Eric, he's, he's, he's no stranger to TTM. He's no stranger to South African football. And, you know, you, you, you've got to respect him for, for the, the, the work he's done and the successes he's had. I know things didn't happen for him at uh, Cape Town. Was it Cape Town? Spurs or Cape Town All-Stars, one of them two. And, you know, he's, he's back in the PSL. And, you know, I think, you know, he's, he, he knows about this club. And from the from the previous orders, and I think he's like any coach. He's got to be wary of of um, his opponents on Sunday, like we have. Like I said, we even though they're below us in the league by one point, you know the the league the league fixtures go way out the window. It's a cup final, and we've got to make sure that you know when we get off that bus at four thirty and walk into that stadium. The, the guys are not only pumped up for it, but they're, they're, they're so desperate to be a winner. They'll go out there and, and, and they'll go, sh go show themselves to, to, to the whole of Africa. It's going to be played in the whole of Africa. And, and that's something that they've got to be proud of. So, you know, it's nice for him to say that, but, you know, we, we know when, when coaches say things nice about other teams, you know, psychologically, they're trying to get into the brains to, kind of throw them off balance from it. So from that perspective, you know, we, 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 we're not going to take this game lightly. You can't take a, a final, whether you play Gs, Pirates, Sundowns, Swallows, Leopards, whoever, you've got, to, you've got to make sure you win the game. And your second question, Clifford? Um, second question, Coach, I was asking whether, you know, looking at the time that you know your work permit came with all this with all respect to 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 other coaches that were there would you say it came at the right time where you're able to be sitting on the bench looking at how far the team has gone and also the stage of the season not really i, I, I 
I'd, I'd, I'd have preferred to be on there from, from day one. But what I found out this time with, with my visa application, uh, every time we got over one fence, there were two more fences there. Every time we got over the two fences, there were three more fences there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, it ended up taking me and Brian, you know, three weeks to, to get all the documents, all the details. And even on the last day, that's yesterday morning, I was still running around trying to get everything in place. And for some weird reason, when I was at Barocca and Leopards, it took two days. Once the application went in, it took two days. For me, it took six weeks because we've, we've had to do everything in a way now that I never really did for the two previous, for the three previous visas. So, you know, maybe somebody out there didn't want me to be on the bench. Maybe poor David liked to be on the bench and get the adulation. I'm joking, by the way. But um, no, it, 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 it was it was long overdue. It was long overdue. But we finally got there, and, and thank God for we we got over the line. We we finally got over that final fence that allowed me to sit on the bench. Okay, uh, we're wrapping up now. The coach, um, Thomas, is he? Ruby's here, by the way. And towards the same corner from Daily Sun. Uh, Coach, um, how much of a contribution? Oh, no, I'm not talking to the Daily Sun. You kill me. Who? Me? The Daily Sun always kills me. Why? <laughs> no, not me, Coach. Um, Coach, how much of a, confidence, of a con confidence boost does it give to your players? You know, the fact that if they win this cup, they stand the chance of playing in a continental competition next season after just uh, spending one season in the big league? That, that's, that, for me, um, and, and you know that you know, it's, it's wildly you know, expected that the club's going to give X amount of bonus, they're going to go 70-30, 50-50, 30-70. You know, football's not just about money. Football's about winning things. Football's about doing something that, you know, you can go home and talk to your kids, your grandparents, that and, and having the opportunity um, to play the Confederations Cup, which I've done twice previously, and got to group stages once and you know, missed out of the group stages in CAF. It's an absolute pleasure to play in the competition with teams from Tunisia, from Morocco, from Algiers, from Tanzania, uh, from the Democratic Congo. You know, even, you know, Angola, everywhere in Africa, if you're going to be the best, if you're going to judge yourself uh, from other teams, you know, you, you have to go out, outside your country, you know, to, to see what level you're at. And I remember uh, when, when I was going, we, we needed to win uh, Esperance in, in Tunisia to qualify for the two stages. That was just an amazing, an amazing experience. Even though we didn't qualify for the stages, we then went down to the Confederation Cup and we did very, very well. And I, I want my players to see that. I want, them, I want them to look further than just winning the Ned Bank Cup. Obviously, the PSL status has got is, is the first priority. Winning the Ned Bank Cup will then get us into uh, the Confederation Cup. You see what Pirates are doing this year in the, in the group stages. Hopefully they'll get through to the semi-finals. Hopefully they'll get to the final. I want Kaiser Chiefs um, to get to the semi-finals of the CAF. The same with Mamelodi Sundowns. You know, it's 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 an important fixture in in the football calendar for clubs like Mamelodi Sundowns, like Pirates, like Chiefs, like TS Galaxy. The last time we you know we want to represent South Africa and and, and from a province where it's never well liked. You know, as you know, in, 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 in football, the, I don't think anybody's ever had a good word to say about teams from the football province. And I think we need to change that uh, ideology and what better way to win the Ned Bank Cup and bring it back to the Limpopo and prepare for, for next year's PSL status season and qualify for the Confederations Cup. So it's massive. It's a massive opportunity for this team. And the guy next to me, he's, he's 46 next, next, next year. 
So he needs he, he needs to make sure that he, he gets an opportunity to play in the Confederations Cup and travel out of Africa because he, he's only been out of Zimbabwe. That that's his that's how, how far he's been Zimbabwe and South Africa. Everything everything has been going on for us like yesterday. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, like yesterday's result also, you know, uh, he, uh, he made us to, to, to go to the final with a, with a great mindset. So that we're going to take that moment. Yeah, he's always saying that, okay, yesterday you won, so it was a great win for us because um, we really needed those three points for us to go to the final with a, with bad, with a, with a great mindset, you know. At the end of the day, even though we are going to to, to, to play the final, but uh, we also the we see where we are on the log. We really need points, so yeah, we we really want to to pick a uh, points as soon as possible. So we're gonna take the momentum from yesterday to go with it to the final and try to win the final. Okay, uh, let me just take questions from the floor. Um, Togo Zisi. Or is that an old end? Yeah, it's the it's the old end. Okay, uh, Nati. Uh, Arubi, what do you expect from Chipa United on Saturday, and what would you attribute your form to? Because you've been, you know, pulling out some fantastic uh, saves. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult game, a game for both teams, uh, considering where we are. And you know, a final, we can go any any way. So we are mentally and physically prepared for that because Shipa also, they, they've been playing well for the past two, three games. They've been picking up points, which means it's going to be a great game. So we just have to keep on pushing like the way we've been doing and see how far we can go. If you can go for extra time, or if you can win it in the 90 minutes, or even if you can win it in the penalties, you just have to keep on pushing and motivate everyone and tell everyone that, okay, there is something on the table for us. And then your form? Yeah, when it comes to my form, you know, it's also coming with the, um, with the way that, that I've been putting. You see, as I told you that before, that. Uh, you know, there's a time things were not going well for the team, and I was not happy. I was not happy about it, but I kept on going. I kept on motivating the guys that okay, things are gonna be well, they're gonna be fine, and we kept on grinding, keep on grinding on my form, on my on my side. I kept on being positive and working hard, I, even though things were not going well on my side. But I managed to overcome that, and uh, I'm happy with my performance. But it's not like uh, I'm satisfied. I'm gonna keep on grinding, working hard, so that I uh, keep on doing well. Colleagues, do you have any other questions before I close the session? Okay, it seems not. Uh, Washington, thank you very much and uh, all the best for Saturday. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye.